But I love the churches that I planted and the churches that are growing and these churches like in Galatia. I love them so much. I have this daily burden for them. Now look what he says. Who is weak without my feeling that weakness? You know, if you have a brother or sister who's sad or who's upset or who's discouraged, you feel that. And Paul said, I feel that when my brothers and sisters in the Lord are feeling it. He says, who is led astray? I, and I do not burn with anger. Remember, he said, if anybody preaches another gospel, let that person be eternally condemned. Paul says, you know what? When people are led astray from the truth, I get ticked about it. Notice what else. If I must boast, I would rather boast about the things that show how weak I am. God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord Jesus, who is worthy of eternal praise, knows that I am not lying. Pretty amazing testimony, right? Pretty amazing that he would endure all of that for the name of Jesus Christ. He would change his life of being a religious person to becoming a follower of Christ in his daily life. Now, let me just ask you, are you still a religious person or are you following him daily? There's a difference. Amen. There's a difference between religious and being religious and having a relationship with Jesus. Amen. Now notice this in Galatians 2.17. He makes three points about the law and grace. And then he tells us how he's living his life and what we can learn from it. Number one, he says, if we, while we, were, while we seek to be justified in Christ, it becomes evident that we ourselves are sinners. Does that mean that Christ promotes sin? Absolutely not. What is he talking about? He's saying basically this. It is by grace that you're saved. It is a free gift. You don't have to earn it. You don't have to earn it. But notice this. After you give your life to Christ, we are talking about being obedient to Christ. Some people say stuff like this. If I just give my life to Christ and that's all I have to do, that means I can go and live any old way I choose to. But that's not what Paul is saying here. He's saying, he says this. While we seek to be justified in Christ, made right with God in a relationship with Christ, it becomes evident that we ourselves are sinners. Does that mean that Christ promotes sin? Does Christ approve of it when we sin? He says, absolutely not. Now, our salvation is free, but living it out the rest of our life is going to cost us something. It's going to cost us being obedient. I said this to some people recently. God's not concerned about our happiness as much as he is concerned about our obedience. Does that make sense? Amen. He wants us to be obedient. Look at the second point he makes in this passage. If I rebuild what I destroyed, if I try to say that the law is still in attack, if, if after I said it has no effect in my life anymore, if I try and rebuild that and say I have to follow these laws too, notice, notice this. I prove that I am a lawbreaker. Now, in my study in Galatians on Tuesday nights at, at, at uh, Robert's house in my small group, one of the things that we learned is this. God did not give us the Ten Commandments as a list to follow and to follow to the T because every one of us has at least broken one, right? Mm -hmm. One of the Ten Commandments is, is this. Uh, I shall have no other gods before you. All of us have put God on the shelf at some point in our life. We've broken that one. That's just the first one. Okay. So uh, one of the things that we learned about the law is that the law doesn't get you to heaven. Your faith in God gave, puts, that you put in God is what gets you to heaven. Amen. Now, how did all the Old Testament people go to heaven? How did they all get saved? Well, it wasn't by keeping the law. It was because of their faith in God. Like Abraham in, in Genesis chapter 12, where he, it was credited to him as righteousness because he believed God. Now, stay with me a second. Paul says here, if I rebuild what I destroyed, if I say that the law is something I need to do, basically the law just says I'm a lawbreaker. I'm guilty. So I'm going to need more than the law to go to heaven. Now, take a look at this. For through the law, I died to the law so that I may live for God. When I look at the law, he says, I realize how far short I fall from it. Because I died in the law, that I have this separation between me and God. I have to put my trust in somebody else, and that is Jesus Christ. 
And when I died to the law, I have now lived for Christ in that relationship with him. That's so that I might live for God. Now look at the rest of this passage. He says, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live. But Christ lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not set aside the grace of God, for if righteousness could be gained through the law, Christ died for nothing. How many of you know some good people in the world? Nice people that don't know God. Amen. Yeah, I know people like that. The Bible basically says this. If there was any other way, if you can get to heaven by being a good person, if you can get to heaven by following this list of rules and regulations, if you can get to heaven in any other way than Jesus Christ, Christ died for nothing. It was a waste of time. But because there's no other way, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. If you want to be a follower of the way, if you want to be a follower of Jesus Christ, day in and day out, we put our trust in him. Does that make sense? Amen. The Apostle Paul starts off in Galatians 1. There's a gospel message, and it's good news. You can have heaven by putting your faith in Jesus Christ. And he says this in Galatians 2. It's not about keeping these rules and regulations. It's about our trust in Christ. Now, let me just ask you a question. Have you given your life to Christ? Have you decided to follow him? Remember, God can use anybody. That's what I learned about Saul. I'm amazed that he uses me. I just truly am. If if it was my choice, I wouldn't have called me to be a pastor. But God can use anybody. God sometimes has to wake us up and get our attention. Not only that, why? Because he wants to use you. But the fourth point is, when he calls you, he will sustain you if you keep trusting in him. Does it make sense, guys? Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Lord God, I thank you that you can use anybody, even me. And Lord, sometimes you just need to get our attention. So God, I ask that you would get our attention today. God, I know that you want to use us. So I pray that we'd be willing to be used by you. And Lord, I know that your grace can sustain us and help us to do what you've called us to do. Now, if you're here today and you'd like to give your life to Christ for the first time, and you'd like to say, Jesus Christ, I want you to come into my life. Forgive me for my sins. Help me to put my faith in you so that I can go to heaven and I can have your purpose for my life here on earth. If there's anybody here that would like to do that this morning, do me a favor. Just slip up your hand, put it right back down. Anybody here this morning would like to do that for the very first time? If that's you, you can say a prayer of something like this. Jesus Christ, come into my life. Forgive me for my sins. I thank you that you died on the cross to pay for those sins and to make a way for me to go to heaven with God and you. Jesus, come into my life. Maybe you're here this morning and you've been running from God in some area of your life. And you just need to say, God, I give up. Help me to follow you. If that's you this morning, I would encourage you to say that to God this morning. The rest of us, let's pray a prayer together. Say something like this to God. God, forgive me for my sins. I know that you can use anybody, even me. So God, help me to wake up and start following you like you want me to. Dear Jesus, I pray that your grace would sustain me and help me to live the life I say I believe. I don't want to be a hypocrite. I actually want to live this out. Jesus Christ, I thank you for everyone who's here today. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen. Do me a favor. Let's pull out our bulletin and this communication card. I got some next steps for you to do this week. I talked about how We're in a relationship with God. We're continuing to move forward with God. Uh, I want to give you the opportunity to grow this week in your faith. So take a look at this card. Uh, Your next step today could be, number one, if you committed your life to Jesus Christ for the first time today, you can let us know that. And I want you to check that so we can pray for you. And we can give you some things that will help you grow. Number two is, 
I'm going to make a recommitment to follow God. Maybe I haven't been following God and, and I've been running from him. And this message is helping me to wake up. Maybe you need to recommit your life to Christ. As we go through the book of Galatians over the next few more weeks, I think we have four more weeks. I want to encourage you to read chapter three. And if you're willing to do that in preparation for next week's message, check that down. I'll read chapter three. And I want to encourage everyone in this auditorium today to help to memorize Galatians 3.20. I put it on your uh, bulletin. It says this, Galatians 3.20. I have been crucified with Christ. And it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life I would now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. I want to challenge all of you to memorize that verse. Some of you say, I can't memorize anything. I don't remember anything. Well, here's the point. You memorize what's important to you. 